them all. You want one, John? I'll try one. We've been eating because we got here. I'll take it out of Try over that side. Yeah, I'm working. I'm sorry about that. This one's pretty good. That's sick. Well, what else? Nobody else over there wants to do that. I'll take one. I'll take another one. Oh my god, I need a paper towel or something at home. Hey, let me use that place. Yeah, we have to. Oh, it's kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to be quiet, please. Would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, I'm Mondo Grants, and I am here to. Uh, do a pre presentation on making guacamole. How many of you guys have made or tasted guacamole before? That's what I thought pretty much everybody. So what I've decided to do is do something a little bit different today. I am making a chipotle mango guacamole for you guys. Um, before I get started on that though, um, I just wanted to let you know I'm going to be talking today about the history of guacamole. Uh, the ingredients and how to choose and care for them, and uh, also on some of the nutritional values of guacamole. Before I get started, let me tell you a little bit about the uh, history of guacamole. It dates all the way back to the Aztecs. Uh, the main ingredient, of course, is the avocado, and it had great nutritional value to the Aztecs. Uh, it's actually a new world uh, fruit and the reason it was so important to the Aztecs is because their main diet or foods consisted of very low fat uh, kinds of foods. And avocados have a very high fat content, very high protein. So it was very important to them in their diet. It was very, uh, had great nutritional value for them. Uh, they loved their avocados. They loved how it tasted. Uh, it's said that they liked them with salt or with sugar or with both salt and sugar. That's how much they love them. Um, the ingredients, of course, the main ingredient is the avocado. I wanted to use Haas avocados today, but when I went to the grocery store yesterday, they didn't have any. It's supposed to be the best tasting of the avocado for uh, guacamole. Um, instead, I got the kind that you usually find at the, in most every grocery store. This was a Walmart special. Um, I also brought, of course, mango. Uh, tomato, onion, jalapeno, a little bit of lime, and some other uh, special flavors. The original recipe has changed very little from the Aztecs, but of course now there's all different kinds. You can add almost anything you'd like to your guacamole now. When you're looking for avocados, um, look for ones that don't have very many blemishes and you're gonna to wanna to press down and it shouldn't dent, it should kind of press in a little bit but not bounce back. If you can't find any that are ripe enough for use and you wanna use them right away, put them in a paper bag with a little bit of banana or apple and that'll help them ripen up quicker. Um, when you're cutting up an avocado, you're gonna to want to cut it in half. Do you ever make that in a uh, mix in a mixer? You can, can make you, it any consistency. If you, you want a puree, you can puree it. 
um, in a food processor. Food processor, or you can even just uh, large dice it if you wanted to. If you want to keep yours, and then mm -hmm. I guess you could uh, get a lot of different tastes in the same bite and mm -hmm. mixing it all together. You can use any kind of onion. Traditionally, of course, it's going to be a Spanish onion. The mangoes, when you go to uh, shop for those, you're also going to look for, I, I've already cut mine up, but you're going to want to look, look for one without any blemishes or lumps on that as well. Uh, bright colors, red and uh, yellow. And you could also smell the stem of one for the fragrance, and that will let you know if it's fresh or not. They're a little bit more difficult to uh, cut up than the avocado is or to get the seed out from the rind. Um, the preferred method, because they can be quite messy, the mangoes can, is to cut them in half and then make crisscross lines like you're playing tic-tac-toe. And uh, that way, and, and make the lines how, however close you want. If you want large dice, of course, you make larger lines you want smaller dice, shorter line, and then you can cut it off the seed that way. Um, today I'm using two avocado, about four ounces of mango. Um, the recipe calls for fresh tomatoes, but they're a little out of season right now. You can also um, just trade that in for <coughs> salsa out of a jar if you have a favorite one. And uh, if it's not summer and you don't have any fresh tomatoes available, Somebody told me once if you store avocados with their seeds or guacamole with the seeds in the guacamole that it stays fresh longer. Do you think that's a wife's tale? I do think that's a wife's tale. Um, the best method is to put some lemon juice on it and wrap it tightly in plastic wrap. If you have already made guacamole and you'd like to try to preserve that, you could uh, also put some lime, with, you probably already have some lime in it for your acidity. Um, but if you put some plastic wrap, so you had it in bulk, put the plastic wrap in, and put it down as close to the guacamole as you can. Uh, it will still lose its color, though, and will last only for a couple of days. You rip all the oxygen off. Yes. The most important thing when you're making your guacamole is, is to have a balance of, of flavors. Um, a lot of people don't like to use lime or lemon juice. I think it does help add with the flavor. You always add that in at the last, depending on taste, and uh, any seasonings would be the same way. You're going to put that at the very end. We start out with the avocado, and you're going to want to chop it with a spoon, or you can use a fork to whatever size you want, or you can put it in a blender, um, puree it, a food processor. You're not going to want to add the tomatoes or onions in yet because you don't want to bruise them and mash them. So you're going to want to make sure you get this to the correct consistency first. Now this is a new recipe to me. This comes from a chef um, in New York and he grew up in Mexico and used to go to the market with his mom. But he over time just developed his own own recipe for his uh, restaurant in New York. This is Chipotle tomato paste. Um, if you want, you can dice it before you put it in. 